needed to be a one-stop shop place where Catholics could go and it could serve as a source book. Religious scholars believe the 20th century marked the beginning of a new age of civilization and of the Christian religion. Ideologies like communism, atheism, and humanism influenced societies shaken by two world wars. Pope St. John XXIII responded to this crisis by initiating the Second Vatican Council in 1962. The Church recognized the need to have a dialogue with the modern world. While the Church's liturgy, leadership, and the role of the laity started to look different in response to the Council, its teachings remained unchanged. In 1985, Pope St. John Paul II summoned the Church's bishops to reassess the impact of the Council and figure out the next steps in implementing its reform. Jem Sullivan, a professor at the Catholic University of America, says the bishops asked for a new universal catechism to be written. The Synod of Bishops was looking around at the rapid globalization of culture, and they recognized the need for a summary of the Catholic faith that could be used universally, globally, as a reliable point of reference and a sure norm for teaching. A year later, John Paul II commissioned a group of cardinals and bishops to begin writing this new catechism. After six years of drafts, rewrites, and tens of thousands of changes suggested by bishops all over the world, the Church had a final draft of the new universal catechism. And in 1992, on the 30th anniversary of the Second Vatican Council, John Paul II approved the Catechism, offering it to all the faithful who wish to deepen their knowledge of the unfathomable riches of salvation. So now bishops and pastors and teachers and catechists could look to the Catechism as a point of reference for their preaching, for faith formation. But more than that, it was to be a source of wisdom for all the faithful and a kind of wellspring for the entire pastoral mission of the church. Some Catholics worried that the new catechism wouldn't be an effective tool in disseminating the faith. By the faithful, there was a bit of a question as far as how well the catechism could speak or respond to the cultural situation of their time, of their reality. But Carlos Taja of the USCCB says once it released, the book became a bestseller and sold millions of copies. It immediately became one of the most useful tools for catechesis. And I think now it's received much, much better. And now all Catholics can engage with the catechism in numerous ways. There are websites, videos and podcasts that help Catholics utilize the catechism as a guide to their Christian life. Rather than just approaching the catechism as a summary of the Catholic faith, which it is, or a handy reference book, which it is, um, we might look to the catechism as a spiritual companion.